you didn't think you were into plants, this is definitely one of the places you should come visit. The greenhouses of a botanical garden are flipping awesome. Hi everyone, Jonas here. This week is going to be about interviews. Some tips and tricks on how you can vary up your setup to give your video a different feel when it comes to the interviews. I have been shooting interviews pretty much all week for a variety of different projects and I have been mixing things up quite a lot because depending on how you set up your interview, it really gives the interview a very different feel. For the work that Rob and I do, we generally mix between either walk and talk interviews where we just follow a person and let them explain things as we walk. Must describe to me how it is to work out here. This is sort of our office. At least for the... Or more traditional lockdown stand up or sit down interviews in one spot. One positive thing about the walking talks is that they tend to be much more conversational and often allows the person we interview to forget about the camera and just talk about things more freely. Right, I mean, that actually is a great urban tree. Uh, in a, in a, a lot of times we shoot interviews alone, but for the walking talks, it definitely helps if you're two people working, one walking with the expert and one filming. It also really helps if the two of you have really talked things through beforehand so that you both know what you're after and you can sync your actions. For example, you may have decided that you shoot all of the close-ups of what is being shown afterwards so that the cameraman doesn't just start to punch in on details in the middle of asking an important question where it would be good to get some facial expressions and stuff. Walk and talk interviews for the cameraman becomes a game of moving around while anticipating good sound bites and constantly refocusing the camera. With the lockdown interviews, we're forcing our subject to stay in one spot. This is good in some ways because it gives us more control and we can often direct the questions better. On the other hand, it often also reminds our interviewee that they are being filmed and we run the risk of them acting more nervous. One big recommendation here, do what you can to lighten up the situation and make them feel comfortable in front of the camera. You are going to be happy you did afterwards. One big value to the lockdown interviews is that we can control what we get on camera. It doesn't matter if the person we interview have to say the same thing 10 or 20 times to get it right. If the 20th time was great, then we have our soundbite. Basically, our lockdown interviews allow us to follow a script better, but may make the video look a bit boring if our takes are too long and we use it too much. If we have the time and resources for it, I really prefer a combination of both. First, we follow the expert around, having them talk freely, show us what they have. And then we set up a quick lockdown shot where we cover the points that are missing or things that we feel needs to be explained better. And since they have just talked about it once, the worst usually comes out easier and we have two versions to work with and cut between in post-production. For this week's projects, I was only after very short sound bites by experts to be included in some fairly fast paced montages. I was also shooting alone, so this all called for some traditional lockdown interviews. But there are still many ways that you can change up the look of the interview. One of the main things, for example, is what lens you choose to shoot with. I always bring at least two lenses when I head out to shoot interviews, one wide angle lens and one telephoto lens. And what lens you choose to shoot your interview with, I think, really changes the look and feel of the interview and serves slightly different purposes depending on the visuals that you're trying to show. So I just want to show you one setup here with a wide angle lens. This is what I have and I have one light right here and uh, this is kind of what it looks like. A wide angle lens can give an interview kind of a busy news reports feel in the middle of the action sort of thing like this. And for obvious reasons, I also use the wide angle lens for all walk and talk they, they interviews. In contrast, when shooting with the telephoto lens, I can frame the person differently. The background becomes almost like a studio backdrop, less busy and cleaner. For this interview, we were talking about the ocean and development, so I was asked to put the cranes in the background as kind of a subtle detail, but I still wanted to keep the image pretty clean. I thought this looked pretty nice. If you're shooting an interview with a telephoto lens like this one, it does feel a little bit weird because you're so far away from the person that you're talking to. But you have to remind them that even if you are shouting questions at them, they can still talk with a normal voice and you will hear what they're saying through the microphone and the headphones that you're wearing. Making sure we come home with good sound bites is of course one of the most important things with interviews. This also means we should prepare ourselves for failure and have backup plans. Because for some mysterious reason, 
audio equipment tends to fail, at least for us, when it's not supposed to. And since most of us probably can't afford having a bunch of extra labs lying around, here are some things that I always try to bring with me just in case. Some kind of adhesive tape. Besides being useful to fix things or attaching the microphone, I have a piece of tape stuck to my wireless microphone. I then make a loose loop on the mic cord and attach the tape. This prevents pulling on the attachment point of the microphone cord, something that all too often creates annoying crackling noises on the audio track. A small shotgun microphone. Really good to have as a backup even if you primarily use wireless microphones. A GoPro camera without the underwater housing, Model 4 and newer. These record pretty good audio. Hey everybody, I'm trying not to drop the phone. It is a long way down. Once when I was in a pinch, I actually recorded the audio of a whole 45 minute presentation using a GoPro 4 that I hung around the neck of the presenter. Worked surprisingly well. A good windscreen for your microphone. Very good to have handy. And don't forget batteries. Always bring extra batteries. Before I start firing off questions, I first let everyone know my plan. Stuff like this. If you stumble on something and you want to do it again, totally fine. We can do it over and over again. If you start over on something, just make sure that the next go sound like it was the first time you said it. Please avoid referring back to things that we have looked at or talked about before. So don't say things like, like we saw before or like I said earlier, since I don't know in which order things will appear in the video. Since I'm going to cut my own questions out of this interview, please avoid starting an answer with a yes or a no. And I also ask, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> this last question or something similar usually throws them off and makes them forget that they are being filmed. And as they answer it, I can adjust audio levels. And this is usually a really good icebreaker to lighten things up a little bit before the interview starts. For us, this can't be stressed enough. So many times are we told that the people we are about to interview have had bad experiences with other film teams or reporters in the past. We don't want science and researchers to come across as strict and hard to relate to. So it's really important for us that the people feel comfortable in front of the camera. It is hard to be put in front of a camera if you haven't practiced it before. Really hard. So the big recommendation is to do what you can to lighten up the situation and make them forget about the camera. Perfect. Ta -da. Ta -da. And they're blackbirds with red wings. This is all I have from Gothenburg and the Botanical Garden for this time. If you ever come to Gothenburg, make sure you check out these greenhouses in the Botanical Garden. They're pretty awesome. I hope this video also gave you some ideas on how you can improve your interviews next time. I want to throw out a big thank you to all of our supporters through Patreon. You guys rock. And thanks everyone else for watching the video. Stay tuned for the video coming out next week.